A lot of the clients that I work with in teaching Studio One online are often a bit confused about the audio routing from impact into the mix console. So I wanted to put together a really quick tutorial to explain how all of that works. Now I've got an impact loaded and there's no kit loaded. All of the pads are empty. And if we close that out, I'll press F3 to open up the mix console. We can see we have one channel for the impact. And this is what I think a lot of the clients are expecting to see one channel for the instrument. Most of the other VSTs that we load are going to have one. But for the impact, once we load and just take note of the bottom right hand corner here, these are these all say one. But once we load a kit, then we can see that those ones have been changed on many of these pads. So we can see six, three, five, and so on. And now when we open up the mix console, we can see we have a lot more channels. And this is what confuses a lot of them. Is they ask me, well, why do I have all of these different channels? And that's because these different preset kits that you load are going to route these individual sounds to uh, individual or discrete channels within the mix console. And so the next question often is, well, why are they grouped in this way? And if you notice here, we have two kicks. Both of these have the same color and they're both on channel one, which kind of makes sense. So if you want to add compression to a kick, then both of these kicks are routed to this one particular channel. Here we have a snare and a clap. These are usually going to have the same place within your beat or your song. So th these are both routed to channel two. Now we have the hat, crash, and ride. These are similar sounds, so they're all routed to, well, the hat is routed to channel three and the crash and ride, which are more similar, are routed to channel five. So in this way, you can apply different effects or dynamics processing, as I mentioned, like a compression or EQ or uh, reverb. And so this is gonna allow you more flexibility in your processing and mixing when you're working with the impact. If you would like to uh, change these at any time, you can click on the number in the bottom right hand corner, and then you have a menu here where you can choose. So if you'd like to send your kick out on a mono channel, then go ahead and select that. And we can see that a mono channel has been created. And we can see that the circle that's next to the one is, these are going out on stereo. That's why you have this pair of circles, left and right. When we choose mono, we have the single circle. And when I click on that, we can see the activity on that mono channel. Now, one other thing to be aware of is that we have a menu here. If we click on this outputs button, then we can see all of the different channels that are active. This last one here is the mono that was created when I chose to send the kick one out on that mono channel. I could actually activate more stereo. You can have up to 16 stereo outs or 16 mono outs. So if I'd like to add some more monos, then I could just notice in the mix console, these pop up there. So you may not necessarily need to worry about that if you're gonna say we wanna send this kick out to mono six as we saw, then it's gonna be created for you there. Here's our mono six. But if you wanted to uh, send out another sound, we can choose the mono three. We can see that that's active. And now this is going out here on that mono three. And another thing to be aware of this is if we were to, let's come back to our kick on mono one. If we were to come out, come to the uh, output menu here and deselect this, notice in the mix console, that channel goes away. We just have mono two through six. And now when I trigger the kick, we don't hear anything. And that's because it's still being sent to mono one. So if you're having issues with your audio, this could be one other place to check. So we see first look in the bottom right hand corner to see what channel is being sent on. You can come to your outputs and we can see, oh, well, this isn't even active. So let's go ahead and reactivate that. And now we once again can hear our kick.
And the last thing I want to mention is just that the routing here, if you're going to be working with the presets, this is going to change for the different kits that you load. So if I choose the city kick kit rather, and uh, let, let's go ahead and deactivate those monos because we can see all of these. We can see the dual circles. These are all being sent out on stereo. So I want to make this clear. Get those out of there. So these are all being sent out on stereo. We can see two, five, three, six, one. And then if we choose another kit, we can see we have another, a couple additional channels for this kit. So this is gonna change based on the uh, particular kit that you've chosen. So there is not gonna be a set standard or routing for every single kit. They're all gonna be routed a little bit differently uh, when you're choosing them. So that's just one last thing to be aware of. And that is how audio is routed from impact to the console.